Hi, my name is Sherry Yannick, Churchill Librarian. Today, I am super excited to read to you a book called America's Champion Swimmer, Gertrude Ederle. And this is written by David A. Adler and illustrated by Terry Widener. As an endurance athlete, I find Gertrude fascinating, inspiring, and her perseverance is something that is just so amazing. I hope you enjoy this book as much as I do. It is a wonderful biography about a truly amazing woman, swimmer, athlete, and American. In 1906, women were kept out of many clubs and restaurants. In most states, they were not allowed to vote. Many people felt a woman's place was in the home. But Gertrude Ederle's place was in the water. So you can see her as a little baby right there getting a bath. Gertrude Ederle was born on October 23, 1906. She was the third of six children and was raised in New York City, where she lived in an apartment next door to her father's butcher shop. Her family called her Gertie. Most everyone else called her Trudy. So the first time I saw this image, I just laughed. So can you imagine learning to swim where somebody ties a rope around your waist and throws you in the water and that's how you learn to swim. And that's how this champion swimmer learned to swim. Trudy spent her early years playing on the sidewalks of New York. It wasn't until she was seven that she had her first adventure in the water. While visiting her grandmother in Germany, Trudy fell into a pond and nearly drowned. After that near disaster, Trudy's father was determined to teach her to swim. For her first lesson, he tied one end of a rope to Trudy's waist and held on to the other end. It put Trudy into the, he put Trudy into a river and told her to paddle like a dog. Trudy mastered the dog paddle. She joined her older sister, Margaret, and the other children in the water and copied their strokes. Soon, Trudy swam better than any of them. Wow. Pretty inspiring, right? From that summer on, it was hard to keep Trudy out of the water. She loved to swim. At the age of 13, she became a member of the New York Women's Swimming Association and took lessons there. At 15, Trudy won her first big race. The next year, she attempted to be the first woman to swim the more than 70 miles from Lower Manhattan to Sandy Hook, New Jersey. When Trudy slowed down, her sister Margaret yelled, Get going, lazy bones! And Trudy did. She finished in just over seven hours, and she beat the men's record. Wow. She's pretty impressive. People were beginning to notice Gertrude Itterlei. Newspapers described her as courageous, determined, modest, and poised. They called her the most perfect swimmer. Trudy's mother said she was just a plain home girl. In 1924, this plain home girl was good enough to make the U.S. Olympic team. Trudy won three medals at the Games in Paris. Her team won more points than all the other countries' swimming teams combined. Doesn't sound like a plain home girl to me. By 1925, Trudy had set 29 U.S. and world records. She was determined to take on the ultimate challenge, the English Channel. Many had tried to swim the more than 20 mile wide body of cold, rough water that separates England from France, but only five men and no women had ever made it all the way across. Many people were sure Trudy couldn't do it. A newspaper editorial declared that Trudy wouldn't make it and that women must admit they would remain forever the weaker it didn't matter to Trudy what people said or wrote. She was going to swim the channel. Right, so we learn that people don't think she could do it because she's a woman. The water is, it's 20 miles. The water's super cold. It's rough. And she still says she's going to do it. Wow, she's pretty inspirational. Early in the morning on August 18th, 1925, Trudy stepped into the water at Cape Grisnes, nice, France, the starting point for the swim. For almost nine hours, she fought the strong current. Then when Trudy had less than seven miles to go, her trainer thought she had swallowed too much water and pulled her crying from the sea. Trudy did not give up on her dream. She found a new trainer and a year later, on Friday, August 6th, 1926, she was ready to try again. 
So the current's really strong. She swallowed so much water and then her trainer pulled her from the water. So I actually found out that she fired that trainer because she was so angry that he pulled her from the water and she said he should not have pulled her from the water. And she kept going. Definite sign of perseverance. I love this page. Trudy wore a red bathing cap and a two-piece bathing suit and goggles that she and her sister Margaret had designed. So they didn't really have swimming goggles like they do today. So she and her sister kind of made their own and the same for the swimsuit. They had swimsuits, but this is a very different one that her sister helped her design. To protect her from the icy cold water, Margaret coated Trudy with lanolin and heavy grease. So today when the water is really cold, we wear a wetsuit, right? And that keeps us warm when we're in the water if we're out surfing or we're going to be in the water swimming for a long period of time. In those days, they didn't have wetsuits. They used lanolin, which is like from sheep's wool and it's kind of like this super heavy oil and grease so imagine rubbing this like, super thick stuff on your skin and that's going to protect you from the water for heaven the greasing took a long time far too too long for trudy for heaven's sake she complained let's get started you can kind of see her putting it on her over here finally at a little past seven in the morning she stepped into the water gee but it's a bit cold trudy said so she's starting and she's saying it's cold already and she has to swim 20 miles in this. Let's see what happens. I love this. <laughs> Trudy's father, her sister Margaret, her trainer, and a few other swimmers were on board a tugboat named Alsace. The boat would accompany Trudy to make sure she didn't get lost in the fog and was safe from jellyfish, sharks, and the channel's powerful currents. There was a second boat too with reporters and photographers on board. So not only is it cold, and we know that the water's rough. There's also fog and there's jellyfish, sharks. And she still wants to do this. Wow. As the Alsace bobbed up and down in the choppy water, Margaret wrote in chalk on the side of the boat, this way, old kid. She drew an arrow that pointed to England. Now, as an endurance runner, um, I know some of the food that I eat when I run 100 mile races would surprise people, but I love this page and it still like made me laugh. So here she's lying on her back eating chicken with a, a cup of broth. And that's not what we usually think of. We think of someone doing a lot of long distance swimming. We don't think about them eating in the water, but that's what you have to do. And that's what she's doing. To entertain Trudy, Margaret and some of the others sang American songs, including the Star Spangled Banner and East Side, West Side. Trudy said the songs kept her brain and spirit good. At first, the sea was calm. So it's good for swimming, right? Calm water. Trudy swam so fast that her trainer was afraid she would tire herself out. He ordered her to slow down. What do you think Trudy did? Trudy refused. At about 10.30 in the morning, Trudy had her first meal. She floated on her back and ate chicken and drank beef broth. A while later, she ate chocolate and chewed on sugar cubes. Then she swam on. So this is what she eats so that she can swim this long. Oh, look at this page. These pages are like wild. So you see what is happening, right? There's lots of waves. You see the boat is kind of turned around. And then do you see her? Wait, I'm going to bring it closer. You can see how tiny she looks in comparison to those huge waves. At about 1.30 in the afternoon, it started to rain. A strong wind stirred the water. For a while, Trudy would swim forward a few feet, only to be pulled back twice as far. So it's almost like she's swimming back. By 6 o'clock, the tide was stronger. The waves were 20 feet high. The rough water made the people aboard the Alsace and the news boat seasick. So the waves are so high. If you can kind of imagine what 20 feet is like, I am 5 foot 4. So that's, that's like um, almost 4 of me, right? It's so tall. And that's how high the waves are. The waves are so rough that the people on the news boat are getting nauseous and seasick, right? and she's still swimming. Trudy's trainer was sure she couldn't finish the swim. He told her to give up. No, no, Trudy yelled over the sound of the waves. She kept swimming. In the next few hours, the rain and wind became stronger and the sea rougher. At times, the rough water pulled the boats away out of Trudy's sight. She was scared. It was eerie being out there all alone. So she's out here in the middle of nowhere, and it's we know there's sharks, and there's jellyfish, 
and the waves are rough and it's cold. She can't see anything and there's fog. Now Trudy began to have trouble kicking in the water. When the Alceus came close again, Trudy said her left leg had become stiff, right? So she can't kick as well. If you can't kick as well, can you swim as well? Her trainer was frightened for her. He yelled, you must come out. What for? Trudy shouted and kept swimming. Trudy continued to fight the tide and the constant stinging spray of water in her face. She knew she would either swim the channel or drown. Wow, that's the ultimate perseverance. She's like, I'm going to swim, and I'm going to finish this, or I'm going to drown trying. She refused to give up. As, as Trudy uh, near Kingston, on the coast of England, she saw thousands of people gather to greet her. They lit flares to guide her to shore. Right, so it doesn't look like she's going to die trying, right? At about 9.40 at night, after more than 14 hours in the water, Trudy's feet touched land. Hundreds of people, fully dressed, waded into the water to greet her. I love that idea. When she reached the shore, her father hugged Trudy and wrapped her in a warm robe. And it might be a little hard to see, but you can see her skin has like those splotches from the lanolin and the grease on her still. I knew if it could be done, it had to be done, and I did it, Trudy said after she got ashore. All the women of the world will celebrate. And I love that. She proved it, that all the people that thought that, she, that women couldn't do that, she proved women can and she could. Trudy swam the channel in just 14 hours and 31 minutes. She beat the men's record by almost two hours. So not only did she prove that women could do it, she proved that women could actually do it faster than men. In newspapers across the world, Trudy's swim was called history making. Reporters declare that the myth that women are the weaker sex was shattered and shattered forever. Trudy sailed home aboard the SS Barangia. After six days at sea, the ship entered New York Harbor. Two airplanes circled and tipped their wings to greet Trudy. People on boats of all kinds rang their bells and tooted their horns to salute her. Fog horns sounded. Trudy climbed into an open car for a parade up Lower Broadway. An estimated two million people, many of them women, stood and cheered. They threw scraps of newspaper, ticker tape, pages torn from telephone books, and rolls of toilet paper. When her car arrived at the New York City Hall, Mayor Jimmy Walker praised Trudy for her courage, grace, and athletic prowess. American women, he said, have ever added to the glory of our nation. President Calvin Coolidge sent a message that was read at the ceremony. He called Trudy America's best girl, and she was Gertrude Iterle had become a beacon of strength to girls and women everywhere. So I hope you enjoy this book, America's Champion Swimmer. I find it so inspirational and just a really beautiful story. Thanks so much for listening and keep on reading.